Okay, we're gonna start the styling shih tzus now, and I want to just thank my little friend Dixie. This is Dixie. These are all her little doggies. She ran around the whole city of Calgary today and for the last three months, bringing the arsenal of shih tzus. They're all the purebred Shih Tzus, which is awesome. This little dog on the demonstration, I, this is part of this particular uh, program that I really wanted to thank the people that had helped us. The top Shih Tzu breeders in North America have given me their dogs and they want you groomers to know more about their breed. This is a beautiful black little Shih Tzu, but he's cut down, he's a champion. He's one of the top sires of all time, but you can see how nicely put together he is. All of these dogs are nicely put together. We've all seen the Shih Tzus with the legs on backwards, all that business. So I tried to bring you guys a whole bunch of different ones. Poor Peter. I gave him this guy because he looks like a boy dog, doesn't he? Doesn't he look like Pete should groom him? Yes, that's what I thought. So he's in like a little kind of terrier clip. We were talking about this before. I bred Shih Tzus forever. I put them in Asian fusion haircuts. They don't need to be all the same. He looks awesome with this big long beard on him. Right, and this would be, for me, more terrier influenced of a haircut. Of course, it's not breed profile, it's a mixed breed haircut. He's a champion dog, but just something that you can do in your shop. Just a different way for you to think about it. This is a brand new little baby. I'm not even gonna groom her today, but she's five months old. She's just getting her little thing on. So just like what we did with the puppies, the little schnauzer puppy, right? Make sure they have a positive little if this came into your shop, give it a bath and a blow dry for the first time, trim its nails, make it have a positive experience, put a bow in it, trim its bum, and see them again in one month or three weeks, okay? That's what you're gonna do with these guys. This little one is, uh, she's a really, really pretty little girl. We just keep her, this is a, just a nice little regular commercial haircut that all, any one of your customers is gonna be thrilled. Jill's gonna take her body off with a zero, which is the yellow blade, and then we're gonna just scissor in her legs. I can have my other one, thank you. Yeah. And then Sammy has this little one, and I don't know what you call this haircut. We call it the outline clip. But that was Jackie Bolton and I a million years ago. We had these Shih Tzus and Yorkies and we went around the outline. Okay, so that's, that was our infamous wisdom. It wasn't like it was, uh, you know, at the AKC breed profile. The outline haircut, I don't know, it's sort of, a little bit like an American Cocker, I suppose. She was in full show coat <clears throat> not very long ago, like this one. Okay, so there we have the fully show coated one as well. So you can see we have all different colors of Shih Tzus, all different haircuts on Shih Tzus. So what we've been saying all day long, there's not one way to groom any one of these breeds, right? I hope that we're giving you a wide view and a range of what you can do on these. I'm just gonna do a little top knot on her. I have to share a table with Jill, she's very nice. And this one's kind of a nice one because I'm gonna cut her down today too. I know, look at your faces, I wish I, come back here and do it again, just like, that was good. <laughs> she just finished her championship. She did very, very well. She won a bunch of sweepstakes and so on. So it's time, so we held her out. So we have to say thank you to Dixie because she had to dematter and brush her out for the last three weeks for you guys because she wanted to cut her down a long time ago. <laughs> so again, you just want to use your little chin rest. Um, I just, can one of you girls grab the elastics? I think Joanne had them at the back. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, do we have any black chalk? I don't know if we do.
So normally I use a, a, a little black chalk. This is just a little um, calligraphy pen. It works very well too. But the little piping up the sides here, if you just take your little black and you mark it in, it makes a big difference. Easy girl, you're okay. Come on. Thanks, Joe. Stop. Stop. Oh, you're okay. Shh, 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 shh. Can you grab the white powder and the blush brush? You take the powder. Stop. Stop. Hey, Dad. Stop. Eh, eh. So it, almost exactly what we did on the Yorkie, okay? We're just going to take the corner of the eye. And from the corner of the eye again. And then you're going to do the inverted V on the back. So then you're going to pull the first one and you're just going to take some little hairs at the back and pull it straight back first. Stop. And then just take, pinch the front of the bubble. Stop. There you go. And then you're going to do the same on the back, but you're going to pull it towards you this time. Now, you got to make sure you keep this tight to the skin. A lot of the problems is you get it too loose and then it's going this way or this way. Look, they were out drinking all night. You need to keep it tight to the skin. They, uh, they say that it's like building the foundation. Okay, so if it's not tight to the skin, it won't work. Before we put the bow on this one though, the Shih Tzu's hair is much heavier than the Yorkie's hair. So I normally will pull these two pieces together put them together, then put my bow in. Then I take this piece and I put another elastic on top of it. It holds my bow in. And then this is the tricky one. As if you just take a bow, I don't know, just a little about this much hair out of the back of it. And you put one more, a little bit up, it will brace it. So once it's in, uh, you can curl it. You should curl it, but I didn't bring a curling iron, so we're not curling it. You want to take it in little sections and just back comb it first. You have to build in the, something to hold it up. So I start at the back 
and I've got my little ratting in, and then I'm going to just spray it, like we did on the Giants this morning, okay? Now look at how cute that is, right? Adorable. Oh, so cute. One thing that we do on the Shih Tzus, as long as they ever got the bad bite and they got a tooth sticking out, don't do this, okay? If they have bad pigment, don't do this, but all these ones are nice. So just turn it onto a 40 blade. Stop, stop. Oh. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, and if they're like that, don't do it. This one's good because you'll have a whole clean face. <laughs> just hold her down for a sec, she's mad. I'm just gonna do it on this one because she likes it. Right there. Okay, so see how it shortens up their face perfectly? This is a good one here, I like this picture. Okay, so this is kind of what we're doing today. This is Damon, this is a lady I used to breed dogs with together for years. So this is him when he was all beautiful, top dog. So do we have, uh, that's him again. That's him in Asian fusion, Aww. right? Right, and it, I mean, he is an excellent quality animal, but I just want you to notice how you can like think outside the box, right? And I realize that that's not gonna be for every single customer, but that's very Cocker Spaniel and sweet, you know, infused, even a bit terrier type. It's quite attractive, and the face is really pretty on him, but you could have taken the ears off with that. The ears off is something that I wouldn't mind talking about, because a lot of times, I just had it happen the other day, the cutest little Shih Tzu, and she wasn't mad at anywhere, but her two ears were like mittens, and it was just, they were impossible, so I took them off and gave them a little triangle. It was so cute, and I told the lady, she was thrilled, she'd rather do the dog wasn't hurt than, you know, anything else, so. All right, doing great there, Missy. All right. For now, I'm just gonna put a band in this because I'm gonna shave it down right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna do it in a nice haircut, uh, no worries. No worries. Now one thing you need to know though, when you're doing this kind of stuff, there's gonna be a transitional stage. There's gonna be, you know, it's not gonna be, it's like when we were doing, when we were growing the other dog into Asian fusion. It's not gonna be an Asian fusion. This dog's hair is completely used to being like this, so it's gonna take a bit of time. The one that Sam's grooming on right now, I, I think she's only been cut down for about two or three months. So her hair, for at least a month or two, she had the lines where her rubber bands were in her head. How long has it been, Dixie, since she's been cut down? Not that long, is it? Yeah. So, but now she just got rid of the track marks on her head. Look at Dixie, she's like dancing back there. Woo! An A, the purple one. Hey, hey. So you have to sort of do this with a bit of love when you're doing it, right? You can't just be going crazy. I'm gonna come down here and just build a little angulation. Like, I feel good. It's actually funny how they act when they first get cut down because they're like, woo, they run, her. they think it's so awesome. <laughs> Stop. 
So you see how I'm now changing the way, the angle that I'm clippering on? I took one blade right down the middle, but now I'm sort of blending it into the side and I'm getting some tracking and how to deal with that. She's being so good. She's never had a clipper on her in her life. So she's being awesome. Sometimes they get really scared, you know, because they never had it before. It's okay. It's okay. You're okay. But if they have those moments, this is because they're not used to it. Good girl. Good girl. You're okay. Good girl. Good girl. You're okay. Stop. So another thing that you can do on those ones that if you're going to cut it out is my little cheater. So you just buzz the stuff off on the inside and nobody ever knows. That's a whole lot of hair I just took out that you don't have to, sh you can do that on American Cockers, any of the long coated ones you can do that on. So I'm just tightening it up a little bit in here and giving her a little bit more angulation and giving her a cute little shih tzu bum. So you're just going to use the curved scissors, put your bevel in underneath. I think you're going to think a little bit like an American Cocker Spaniel underline on the semi show. Oops. That can all go. So I cut it in with my fishtails because it gives you a lot more leeway. I'm not so worried about the finish. I'm more worried about the angle that I'm putting it on. And 
one thing I want you to notice is that every single person on the stage is combing the hair down. Nobody's combing it up. Drop coats, and that I see a big mistake is that, you know, look at how beautiful these little fluffy legs are. Turn around so you can see that leg. Right? But at no point is she combing it up like a poodle. It's been combed down and combed into position, and when she takes every single cut, they think about what that cut is going. They're not cutting the hair when it's up here. You comb it to where it's going. It's gonna get a lot better. If you start to think about the type of hair you're grooming, you're going to be a lot more successful. So on this stuff up here, what I do is I'm going to use scissor over comb. This is a hairdressing technique, but it's an awesome technique. I use it every day. I prefer to use the wide end of my comb, but I just go in like this, stop, and you're just going to run the scissor and keep it running. And that's going to get rid of all that tracking. Oh, he looks adorable. Now, I just want to show you Peter's dog, how cute that's looking, and how terrier type it's looking, right? I honestly picked this dog for Peter. We were all fighting over him, but he looked like a manly type dog, didn't he? Right, but he's got a big old mug on him. Look at how pretty his face is. He does have a really beautiful face, and that's why he wears that so well with the nice ears off as well. What, did you, what number on the ears, 10? A number 10 blade. But, uh, yeah, yeah, he's going to blend that into the top. But he's keeping with the terrier type of a haircut, right? If you look at this dog, you think terrier, right? Yeah. You definitely do. I, you know, that was deliberate. There's a couple things. Like with him, we, he's, he was getting a little bit too shaved, so that's still growing up. And there's a few things on him, but it's still going to look gorgeous. And I really like these two little girly girls because they look really girly. Like, you know, if she walked down the street with these dogs, she's going to get noticed, isn't she?
This is a really good haircut. Say that, that little puppy just came in to your shop and they want to keep it long but short. I like when they say that. I want it long but short. Yeah. No, I want it long but short. Did you just say that out loud? Yes, long but short. Yes. So long but short haircut, it's perfect, right? I just did one not very long ago. It was a super cute little Shih Tzu puppy and they were so thrilled. Uh, the baby puppy, if you want, if they want a teddy bear, just use the longest snap-on on it and just like lightly run it over. If it was the orange one with the black tips, be a little lighter because they like those black tips. Stop it. So instead of keeping her face really, really long like this, I'm going to just take it and bevel it roundish. But we're going to keep her top not long because it's cute. And really, if you notice, all of us are just using thinning shears and blenders and thinning shears and blenders and curves on its toes. A snap-on on its body, and that's how she goes. Oh, I'm a rapper. Excellent. <laughs> Am I boring you? Okay, I still don't like those stupid little whiskers that stick out. Get them gone. So another thing that if you uh, have this as a, as a little puppy, you could just take out the corners of its eyes and not worry about like doing the whole bridge of the nose or anything like that. You can just take out the corners of its eyes and it's going to get rid of a whole bunch of that staining. For the people that want and can maintain the longer top knots, right? It's really cute. And if you do have that customer, I will assure you, if you have this customer walking down the street, Sammy tried to hunt down one of my customers that looks like this. She's like, hey, hey, that's a cute, oh, never mind, Shauna grims it. <laughs> I know, it's a true story, right? Because it is the cutest thing, right? So if you see those little ladies, you're going to want that. That's going to bring in more business to your company. You know, and I mean, it's all well and fine to be here, but ideally we all want to make more money and do a better job, be less stressed out. And those, these are just the ways we've found to do it. And I have to tell you, like, this guy didn't like Peter. He, and a lot of dogs, I'm sure you probably get that. Do you have a lot of dogs that don't like men? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Like, we don't have, like, a lot of that in our place, right? 
But just by calming down, and I mean, at first, my dog that I picked for him was like, Arr! and Pete's like, he doesn't like me. I was like, go work your magic, but look at, look at how great he is now, right? So that's all I'm saying, is just a tiny little bit of TLC and a little bit of patience, you're gonna go a lot further. And uh, Shih Tzu's, oh, you know, a lot of people too, they're always like trying to like uh, manhandle Shih Tzu's. It's a brachial breed. So if you cut off their air, they are going to fight tooth and nail. So always keep that in mind. Sometimes I just take them off the news. They get very nervous, even in the bathtub. This really makes me angry when people take the hose and they stick it in their face. You could kill a Shih Tzu. I'm not joking. Easily, easily done. I've seen an eyeball be popped out by someone choking a Shih Tzu, okay? All of this is very important. When they're freaking out in the bathtub, it's because you're sticking the water in their face. So take the water, stick it close here, do it that way. By scaring them or pushing them that, you're not getting any further ahead, right? You're just making them hate it more. So I think it's more important to go slowly, just like with him, right? He, like he's doing fine, and he hated Peter an hour ago. Exactly, or the blaster or anything else, right? It doesn't matter if they're freaking out for it. I've seen Shih Tzus pass out in the bathtub because they get so upset about it. Or even if the water's too warm, they get, they're Shih Tzus, they're weird. I love them, but they are a little bit on the strange side. Do you want me to do her head and you just start finishing this one? Mm -hmm. Okay, beautiful. Do you want this? A I can. Bit. No, no, I can, I can trade it. You can have the, she needs to stand up anyway. She needs a bit of onesie in here and her underline and her front legs. Come on, princess. Thanks. So I'm going to just scissor up her face while Jill runs around her and does a finish on, huh? She's a really cute little dog. Isn't she so sweet? I just love her. So we were doing the snap-on thing uh, on the head. I do her face with a snap-on, and I do a, zero, a number one on top. She has quite a lot of staining. So I take it a little deeper on her. Just to get rid of it. You see this piece right here? If you just lift it up, you can just gently go underneath the eye and get rid of some of that. Because it makes her face whiter. I have a lot of little dogs that I do that on. Somebody was asking this morning with that, if they have that big red spot underneath here, just shave that piece out. But just by taking those little pieces off, look at how much whiter her face is now. Dixie's so funny. She's like, I'll bring the Shih Tzus. Make sure they all get completely groomed. Usually they only get half of a groom. <laughs> Dixie's on to me now. She's like, you better make sure they all have a full haircut. Just in case you guys are wondering. <laughs> so typically the Shih Tzu's face is a circle. Okay? And this one, they're all really pretty faces, but this one's a perfect one for you to look at. Look at, she has perfect little eyes, perfect, and you can see there's a little triangle there, okay? And this one, now this is important, we've all seen the worst bites ever. This puppy has the best bite ever. This is important. Stop. Perfect, perfect. The reason why it is perfect is it is a reverse scissor. She has six across the bottom, six across the top. That is imperative. If you start getting these horrible bites, they get pinched, we're going to tooth going hair, or all of that, it completely changes the shape of the face. I'm only sharing this with you so that you can start to understand the differences between a horrible Shih Tzu face and a good Shih Tzu face. For me, this particular dog has way too much nose. 
Like, if I owned him, I would never have bred to him because he's a big old, it's more Lhasa than Shih Tzu. Sorry, Dixie, I know he's your child. I say it with love. Thank God, see? <laughs> Dixie knew his nose was too long too. Well, high five, Dixie, okay. But I think that the afternoon breeds, I chose these two breeds because if in commercial breeding, they're probably the two most popular breeds or a mix there. And it seems to me that everybody struggles with drop coats the most, other than hand stripping. So if you just comb, and you can set your length, it doesn't matter. It could be the shortest face or the longest face. It doesn't matter. It's just where you set the length. And I personally like to see Shih Tzu's in a roundish fashion. The reason he can pull off that beautiful long beard is because he's got such a big, broad skull on him, right? Um, but these girls, they look like girls, so they're going to be prettier in the rounder face. Can I use those for a second? Try to leave their eyelashes if you can. It really, really makes a cute little face. I don't know if you guys have the problem or not, but I am the worst ear trimmer on the planet. That's me. I always tell my customers that too. I do try, oh, I try, but I don't know. I do one dog and I only trim his ears like twice a year. <laughs> so just, he has one that goes up, one that goes down. And his mom caught me the other day. I was like, you're onto me. I only do it twice a year. <laughs> 
they're really long or I take three inches off and then I do it again at the end of the year. <laughs> I like Pete. He just shaved them off. His are even, just so you know. But there's no reason that any of you people can't leave here, this building, without the tools to do this, right? You need your cordless clipper. You need a cord like cl corded clipper. I would get the KM10. It's the best clipper. It won innovation new product of the year, like not just brushes, combs, anything. Innovative new product of the year, all clip, anything. That wasn't me saying that. That actually won that. So, and we have all the cordless clippers, the best sales we have all year long. But honestly, that's, I use these all day long, every day. How are you doing there, Sam? I haven't picked on you this session. All right, we're getting these guys almost done now. Just a little tidies up. Do you have questions about these guys? Underneath the ear? If it's matted back there, just shave it off. I do it all the time. Like this. Like you mean right here? She's not matted, but if she was, but it's gone. I just, but the owners don't go home and pull the ears up. If it looks nice right now and you got rid of the mat behind the, I, I think I would still get a $20 tip. How about that? Even with the ear shaved out, watch. I'll even do the armpits. Nobody will even notice. And I take them out. I just took them out, and I still have maintained my whole haircut completely. I can just take the thinning shears and thinning shear it up. If it's you know, if it's a big hole, I'll just say that to the owner. I mean, I I don't know how many golden retrievers a year I'd take out the mitten behind its ear and there's a big old clawed hole. And I had to tell the owner, I'm sorry, I had to say this out. And they're like, Oh, thank God you got the rocks behind its ears out, you know. So I think the whole thing too though is you have to remain uh, you have to speak with your customers. If you don't talk to them, you can't figure it out. You have to talk to the wife. You can't talk to the husband. If you talk to the husband, he tells you to shave it. You know you're getting fired. Talk to the wife. I know. It's always like that. Just, I want them short. Just short, just shave it, Shauna. That's what I want. Yeah, the wife wants this haircut. He just wants me to shave it. So talk to the wife. Okay, just thinning sure I'm going to... I always phone the wife. I told the husband that the other day. He said, shave it. I was like, I'm on to you. <laughs> so, well, that's what my wife... No, your wife did not say that. <laughs> your wife did not say that. There's a big difference between shaving it and short. Stay, darling. She's done so well, this one, for yeah, sure, sure. She's done so well, Dixie. I'm so proud of her. Yeah. 
All right, how are you two doing? You're almost done? Look at us, you guys. Well-oiled machine. I'm proud of you. If you get that tracking on their back, you can just use the undercoat knife gently and just drag it through. It'll get rid of that wooly stuff. Stop. So just to be able to maintain it, we wouldn't leave it so long for a pet one. And if you just take that second band and you sort of tip it backwards, it'll have a tendency to hold it back now. Commercial top knot, not the show top knot. I always say that, Shana Bernard said, no, I said that in a different program. Stop. Almost ready for pictures. Could we clear our tables? You do it okay, Pete? You ready? Good. the spring yeah. You guys listened, I'm so proud of you. All right. All right, people, global groomers. Look at Dixie, she's glowing. Ah, oh, you're gonna cry, aren't you, Dixie? <laughs> Is 
exactly the same as what she's got. Just we took. The, I wanted you to see both. This is this kind of haircut. A couple months old. This is today, and see how it's gotten trained, and now her top knot has grown. This one's this one's top knot's probably going to be gone in a couple weeks anyway. That's probably what will really happen. Stay. Stop. So cute, eh? Yeah. So what do you mean? Like, if you want it really precise, could you take flats and just kind of take off the little millimeters? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, let me tell you, I'd let it go out the door like that in a second. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> no, it's also, but par parts of it is, though, Dixie helps me, too. Yeah. Like, his one side of his face is a little, you know. Yeah. Dixie helps. <laughs> hey, I want to hold this one with you. Give me a chimbo, Wimba. Let's see if we can get a group shot on the on the table, on the big table. Let's try to get a groupie over here on the table with 